Good afternoon and welcome back to Girded with Truth. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon as we end off our series, Now Faith. Faith is such a wonderful series. I thoroughly enjoyed myself going through this series. God has really been calling us to a different level of faith, a relevant level of faith where we don't just say we have faith, but we put action behind our faith. This faith journey is such an awesome, wonderful, powerful journey, and I'm glad to take this journey with you and with God. Today, we're continuing in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, but we're going to talk about evidence. Yesterday, we spoke about substance, which is really the ability to have confidence, to abide or tarry with God and even in God for something you hope for. So this is really application to our hope. This is really having the confidence that what we hope for is going to come to pass. And not because we have confidence in the thing, but because we have confidence in God, because we abide in God, because we tarry with God until the promise is manifested. And not just for the promise to be manifested, but even continue to walk with him beyond the manifestation of the promise. Because believing for the promise is one thing, having faith for the promise is one thing. But when we actually get the promise, we need the wisdom of God to be able to keep the promise and steward the promise into the place God wants it. Because remember, this promise is attached to our assignments and the purpose God has placed us in the earth. So yesterday we spoke about substance and today we get getting into evidence. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, evidence. So we see faith is substance but it's also evidence. And evidence means the facts or proof that make something valid or invalid. So evidence can either prove something to be correct or prove it to be false. And this word evidence here is a Greek word. And Greek is a more expressive and descriptive language than the English language. For example, love means one thing in the English language. We have different words to describe love, but every type of love that is described in the Greek language is a different word because Greek is very descriptive and is very expressive. In the Greek language, love doesn't just mean love. It means so many more things than what we see love as based on our English language. So as we get into this word evidence, we are going to see how many facets evidence really has. So in the English language, it's a fact that would prove that something is valid or invalid. And it does mean that in the Greek Greek language too, but it even extends it further to say that it also brings correction to the situation. So it tells a fault, but it doesn't just tell the fault, but it reproves it. It brings correction to that particular situation. So even as we look at the evidence of things not seen, not because it's not seen means there is no evidence. The moment you begin to believe this thing and you begin to grab hold of this and you begin to believe it in your heart so that it is made manifest in your heart, that is the moment that it becomes evidence. It's not evidence when it's manifested in the earth, but it's evidence when you believe it in your heart and you hold it in your heart and you know it is the will of God for your life. Not everything can be explained to everyone else, but this journey with God is really an intimate journey. It's a close walk with God. And as we begin to walk closely with God, we will begin to see life differently. Differently 
from how the world views life, but really according to how God wants us to view life. When we live in God, we live in a different realm. We live in a different way. Our life is really lined up differently because we are to be in the world and not of the world. Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 2 to 4 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So we started off talking about the just living by faith. And we are just because we are justified by Christ. Not because of anything we have done on our own accord, but because Christ has justified us. So we are just and we must live by faith. And God is telling Habakkuk here, write the vision and make it plain. Now remember, I told you that Greek is a very descriptive language. So when God tells Habakkuk, write the vision and make it plain, he's telling him, don't just write the vision. Don't just have a vision statement, but instead outline everything. And after you have outlined it, detail everything. Write everything in details. That's why he said to make it plain upon the tables. And he says when somebody reads this, they should be able to understand it and even carry it further than you could have carried it. Because when God places vision in someone, he gives us even all the details we have to accomplish he shows us step by step everything that we have to do all we have to do is get up and go after it all we have to do with it is run with it and every time we read this vision we should be able to run with it every time we believe God for what the vision says we have to be able to run with it and he says even though it tarries, it, for, it is for an appointed time. And it goes back to substance and evidence because substance is the ability to abide or tarry in and with God and it's also for something you hope for. So what you really have to do is hope for that thing God tells you. So God tells you something. God gives you a vision. You have to begin to hope for it, but hope for it so much that that builds confidence in you, that you don't just hope for it, but you know this thing is going to be made manifest. So that hope begins to manifest as faith, even before it becomes tangible in the earth and begins to manifest. And when that faith begins to build and attach itself to that hope, it becomes evidence on the inside of you, which gives you power to declare that thing and gives God power to manifest it in the earth because we are in partnership with God. No matter how long it takes, God is going to make this thing manifest in the appointed time. And it is going to be made manifest by faith. So we are going to do this thing by faith, but we are also going to have faith. When we begin to apply hope, faith, patience confidence and we begin to tarry with god and in god this thing is going to be made manifest you have to see it in your heart feel it in your heart know it in your heart before it is made manifest in the earth as a matter of fact it is when you observe these things when you have the confidence you have the faith you have the ability to abide in god and with god as a partner then this thing will be made manifest in the earth. So God is waiting to bring our vision to pass. The vision he has given us in the first place. He's just looking for us to believe with him, to partner with him, to tarry with him, and to have confidence in him, to hope in him, but to know that our hope is sure and that our faith would manifest this thing. This is not a prosperity message, but this also applies to 
our lives when we believe in God and we chase after God and we pursue God with our whole hearts our lives are transformed and we are never the same again so this is not just based on things this is based on what is on the inside of us so God is ready to change us to transform us and to transform everything connected to us but what does he really need relevant faith now faith he needs us to have the confidence the substance and the evidence within our hearts and when we have developed these things within us then God has given us the power to declare it and then he has permission to work in our lives in the earth to make this thing manifest before our very eyes we are believing God for so many things be it on the inside and the outside of us but when we have faith and we apply our faith to the situation even if we don't see it that is when God has the permission to work on our behalf what a mighty God we serve that he will allow us to have a say in our own lives and not just have a say in our own lives but also he is ready to fulfill everything concerning us and all we have to do is have faith in him and trust in him with confidence substance and evidence so i encourage you continue to have faith continue to have now faith that we can really pursue god and receive everything he has for us thank you so much for listening have a wonderful weekend bye